all of you for coming today. I know many of you are getting ready to graduate and interested in what you're going to do for the next step. Um, we've been working quite a bit with Meditech from the career services area because they've been a great employer of our students. And we have many students from Bristol that have been employed at Meditech and, and we hear a lot of very positive stories um, come back to us and information on employment. So Greg Clocken is the recruiter from Meditech. He's going to talk with you today about current employment opportunities. He'll also speak with you about career path at Meditech and give you a little bit of information on what you can do to succeed in your job search. So we'll speak a little bit about what impresses him as a corporate recruiter <coughs> when he looks at resumes, when he meets students for interviews. And we expect the talk to take about uh, 45 minutes and we'll spend maybe about 10 minutes for Q&A afterwards. Um, so I'm gonna introduce Greg and let him get started. Thank you, Greg. All right, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll try to go quickly. I don't wanna bore anyone to death. Um, I'm Greg Clark, and I'm actually the college recruiter uh, for Meditech. Been there, for, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. I go to colleges and universities everywhere. Next week I'm in at Bowdoin and Bates up in Maine. Uh, I just came back from Georgia and Alabama, schools down there and everything in between. Um, I actually went to BCC though, uh, many years ago, um, and uh, was sort of a, uh, I think I was a political science major, and before continuing on and going to Stonehill College, and then started at Meditech soon after. Um, so I want to tell you, know, my goal today is to tell you a little bit about Meditech, um, some of the positions that they have available, and uh, you know, a little bit about the culture and history of the company as well. So. We'll start off the you know the agenda's pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit about why healthcare IT and uh, some of the factors that are leading to such a boom within this industry. Um, who we are. Uh, I'll bring you through the history of Meditech and the products that we develop. I'll tell you about what sets us apart. Uh, very unique company uh, in a lot of ways. Um, where your career can take you. Uh, Unique company in that we, we hire at the entry level, we do all of our promotion from within, we do most things internally, so there's a lot of uh, potential for um, you know advancement and growth within the company. Uh, great benefits, comprehensive and generous benefits package, and then uh, hopefully at that point I've piqued your interest and uh, you'll be interested in how to apply. Okay, so we'll start things off. Um, why healthcare, IT, and uh, and why Meditech? Um, and you know, what are the factors that are leading to this tremendous boom in this area? To fully understand the boom in healthcare IT, we have to first look at the boom in healthcare in general. Um, according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, healthcare has 10 of the 20 top 20 fastest growing jobs um, in the U.S. right now. Major factor leading to that is an aging baby boomer population in the U.S. Um, as this group gets older, the healthcare industry is going to need to really grow uh, to keep up with their healthcare demands. Uh, by 2050, 87 million Americans, or that one out of every four adults in the U.S., will be over the age of 65. So you can imagine that the, the healthcare industry will be very busy um, tending to their needs. Um, to keep up, to keep pace with this, um, they will need to add 6.6 uh, .6 million new jobs in healthcare by 2020. Um, that's about a 20 to 30 percent increase uh, over what we have now. Uh, now, when, when people think of healthcare, at least when I used to think of healthcare, I would think of uh, direct patient care, clinical care, uh, nurses, doctors, things like that. Um, but there are many different jobs in healthcare. One of those areas is uh, healthcare IT. And um, software is playing a huge role in healthcare these days. Um, we at Meditech develop what's known as an electronic health record, and I'll go into a little bit more detail with that, but uh, the federal government um, has seen the, uh, you know, the benefits of using something like an electronic health record that Meditech develops, and um, part of the uh, uh, American Reinvestment and Recovery Act um, gave close to 20 billion, billion with a B, 20 billion dollars um, specifically to healthcare IT in an effort to improve technology uh, used within healthcare, improve, improve uh, patient care in general uh, through the use of this technology. Uh, what happens is when the, uh, when the sites, when the healthcare facilities, hospitals and so on, um, purchase a product like Meditech, um, once they prove, prove what's known as meaningful use and that they're using the, the product and improving patient care, um, they are reimbursed by the federal government. So this is leading to a tremendous boom in our industry, you can imagine. Um, 
a lot of talk about the uh, the price of healthcare uh, in the U.S. Um, obviously, the federal government's the largest purchaser of healthcare here, um, and actually, one out of every six dollars of the gross domestic product is actually spent on healthcare. Um, with an aging baby boomer population, they won't be able to keep up with this pace. Uh, so, uh, the electronic health record system actually plays a big role in driving down the cost of healthcare. Um, as well as improving patient outcomes. And that's one of the big reasons for the investment by the, uh, by the federal government. Another thing we're seeing is that consumer involvement um, in, in, in healthcare is really increasing. So patients are really getting involved with their healthcare. They're embracing the technology. Uh, we actually, our, our newest product is something called a patient portal, uh, which allows patients to log in to a system, um, communicate message with their physician, um, any questions, any concerns that they have. They can get lab results, um, uh, check medications that they're on, things like that. Um, this is just the first step to uh, you know, uh, software uh, that involves consumer involvement. The physicians and care caregivers are really embracing this technology as well. Uh, when I started about 10 years ago, I started out working with the software and uh, we had a lot of physicians that said, oh, you know, I, I don't touch computers, I don't do software, I'm a physician. Um, there's a new crop now of, of physicians that are very tech savvy and they're really embracing this technology. Um, they enjoy using Meditech on a tablet device. Uh, you know, iPad, uh, mobile devices on their phone, things like that. Uh, a lot of them uh, are using voice recognition software to dictate and transcribe their reports. They've been doing that for years now. So um, the physicians are actually uh, really interested in technology as well and how it can help them uh, in their jobs. So. As I mentioned before, um, we are an electronic health record provider. Um, to better explain that, we have a video here. Uh, it's actually, Meditech has a South African site, um, and uh, they actually helped us put together this, uh, this video, uh, which covers the story of Frank, uh, a fictional character, uh, in, the in the role that his EHR, electronic health record, plays in his healthcare. Um, so I'll play this for you now. Keep your fingers crossed this works. Frank was born in a Meditech hospital near his first home. His proud parents made sure to bring their son to a pediatrician regularly, where the doctor had full access to Frank's complete medical history since birth. By the age of eight, Frank had grown into well playing soccer. One day, during the practice with his youth team, Frank began experiencing wheezing and severe shortness of breath. The boys' coach was quick to call for an ambulance, and Frank was taken to a nearby hospital where he was treated by the ED staff. After this incident, Frank's pediatrician consulted his health record and diagnosed Frank with asthma. From then on, Frank's breathing levels were examined at each visit to sustain his well-being. After enjoying a successful high school soccer career, Frank graduated with honors and left for a university on the other side of the country the following autumn. Due to the large distance, Frank found a specialist nearby who was able to treat his asthma. The specialist accesses Frank's Meditech record on a regular basis to ensure consistent treatment. After completing his education, Frank moved back to Worcester to start his career. He also found time to reconnect with an old friend, and within a year, the two were engaged to be married. Though his asthma attacks were less frequent now, Frank was sure to continue visiting his physician for regular checkups. It's 2012, and Frank is about to become a father. He and his wife are nervous about being first-time parents, but they are sure to visit an obstetrician right up until the big day and are well prepared for the birth of their child. Since asthma can be hereditary, the doctors and nurses are aware of the risk of breathing irregularities in the infant's first several months. Frank is confident that with the help of electronic health records, Doctors will be able to provide his child with the care he needs to enjoy a healthy life, just as they did with Frank. Meditech's EHR is providing patients like Frank with consistent treatment across the entire care spectrum. It's happening here in the United States, and it's happening all over the world. For you see, Frank's story didn't take place in Worcester, Massachusetts. It took place in Worcester, South Africa. 
Great. So, uh, you know, that video does a good job of explaining the role of an electronic health record and also really shows the global impact uh, that Meditech has. Uh, we're not just a local company. We are a Massachusetts-based company, but our product is used throughout the world. Um, so that's something that we're, that we're very proud of. Uh, and there we go. All righty. Frank was born and <laughs> um, Ah, there we go. Perfect. All right, so I'll tell you a little bit more about who we are now. Um, you know, as I mentioned, electronic health record uh, for new healthcare, advancing fully integrated interoperable future. So uh, now that you know a little bit about the industry, the product that we do, um, the product that we develop, I'll tell you a little bit more about Meditech specifically. Um, company's been around for this summer it'll be 44 years um, we have uh, currently have six soon to be seven Massachusetts facilities we are Massachusetts based um, with about 4,000 employees here uh, here in Massachusetts um, Framingham is where I work um, Canton um, Norwood we have two Westwood facilities and then we have our South Coast facility uh, located here in Fall River um, we are uh, currently in the process of renovating a Foxborough facility uh, right now uh, with room for about 600 to 800 new staff as well. Um, right now we are very close to capacity in all of our facilities. We actually are at capacity in our Fall River facility as well as our Canton facility. So uh, we're not extensively hiring in those areas, but we are filling um, any, you know, any seats anytime people leave, any terminations, although that is fairly rare. Rare, um, especially for our Fall River facility. Um, so we do expect that to change. Uh, hopefully within the year, our uh, Foxborough facility will be up and running, and uh, that'll shift uh, some people around to different buildings, and you should have a better choice of uh, the facility, uh, facility of your choice. Um, so 44 years, uh, we're actually one of the oldest and largest privately owned software companies uh, in the world. Uh, we've had 36 consecutive years of profitability, um, and it's a, a real booming time for us now. We've, we've financially, we've never been stronger. The company started out uh, in the late 1960s with our founder, Neil Papalardo. Um, Neil was an MIT grad and developed his own, he was, he was one of the developers of uh, what's known as MUMPS technology, a very early language. Uh, and with this, he developed a laboratory application um, that was first used at Mass General Hospital. One of the, it was the first software system ever used, uh, ever used in healthcare. Uh, one of the first software systems. He's a real pioneer within the software industry, as you can imagine. Um, this was very successful, and Neil began to uh, market, this, uh, market this laboratory application to other hospitals, um, starting with uh, Cape Cod Hospital and many others to follow. Um, over the years, the, uh, the language obviously evolved quite a bit. The products evolved and, and many were added. Uh, many new products were added. Um, today we have uh, many, many uh, software applications that we develop. Uh, they cover every different area that you'd find within healthcare. Administrative, clinical, financial areas. Uh, the applications all interface with one another. So information is going to flow from you know, admissions to, uh, to the laboratory, to radiology, to billing, and so on. Um, we, you know, our largest customer base is, is hospitals, um, but we're also found in uh, ambulatory care facilities, long-term care facilities, home health care, hospice, uh, behavioral health facilities. Uh, we also have two other facilities, um, one in Minnesota and one in Atlanta. Our Minnesota facility um, focuses on our ambulatory product. Our Atlanta facility uh, focuses, for the most part, on our uh, home health care uh, products. Um, We've grown a real lot. Uh, added over 520 new staff members since 2011. This is actually outdated. We've 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 hired a lot more than that. Um, in the 10 years I've been there, uh, we've doubled our staff here uh, in Massachusetts. When I started, we had about 2,000 employees. We're now up over 4,000 staff. So uh, we're growing quite a bit. Um, our total revenue um, rose 18.8% um, in 2011 to $545 million. And this is a privately owned company. Um, we're not publicly traded, so this is uh, very impressive. We've added over 97 new accounts since 2011, and this is also a number, I need to update this, uh, this is also a number that has grown. So um, our sales team has been very busy, needless to say. 
And uh, this statistic is very interesting. We are the leading vendor in market share uh, with over 2,300 customers worldwide. Uh, here in the United States, we have 27% of the, of the market. In Canada, we have 41% of the market. So one out of every four hospitals here in the United States use the Meditech product. In Canada, it's two out of every five hospitals. So chances are you've probably seen Meditech without even knowing, uh, without even knowing it. Uh, if you've been to any local hospital, every single hospital in the South Coast, 75% of Massachusetts hospitals use our product. So if you've been to Charlton, St. Anne's, St. Luke's, um, any, any hospital around here, they, they use it extensively. Um, some of the hospitals here, we don't sunset any of our old products. So some of them are using some much, much older software, but uh, we, you know, uh, continue to, uh, you know, continue to allow them to do that, and uh, you know, people can grow at their own pace with our software. We uh, we offer a perpetual software license for them, but very strong market share. Uh, so now that you know a little bit about that, I'll tell you a little bit about what makes Meditech so unique. Um, first off, you know, as I mentioned, we're a privately held company. We, we don't answer to Wall Street, so fluctuations in the, in the stock market don't affect us. Uh, they're not concerned with quarterly profits. They're concerned with um, our customers and our staff members. It allows us to put the focus on that. Um, as a result, you know, we've had 40, it'll be 44 years this summer without ever laying a single staff member off at Meditech. So, um, very stable company, very well run. We actually have a triple A credit rating. Um, so, Meditech, own, Meditech doesn't have any outstanding um, bills. When we build a new facility, it's paid, it's paid, for, uh, it's paid for in cash. They're, they're very, very uh, conservative with their money. Um, and uh, it's a very well run company. Um, our customers can be found in all 50 states, throughout the Canadian provinces, and then in 21 countries worldwide. And that's a number that I, I think will really grow uh, in the coming years. So students from, from Bristol Community College could actually be employed at Meditech mm -hmm. and be working in, in a, go, uh, any place in the states or different countries? Yes, absolutely. Um, travel? Yeah, I, uh, you know, with the traveling roles, it's not uncommon. It's, it's pretty extensive travel. I'll go into a little bit more detail with that, but um, you, know, you could be going anywhere. Uh, it, you know, many of them, after a couple of years, see all 50 states. Um, you go to everywhere from Australia to Dubai, South Africa, uh, the UK, a number of different areas. So if you're interested interested in travel and, and you're comfortable with pretty extensive travel, that's certainly an option for you. But we have many in-house positions as well. Uh, so where can your career take you um, at Meditech? As I mentioned, we uh, actually do all of our promotion right from within. Uh, we hire, for the most part, at, at the entry level. So we don't hire any outside supervisors, any outside managers. Um, as a result, every single executive that is there um, started out at the entry level. Um, every manager, supervisor, director, VP, um, they started out the entry level. They've been in your position before. They've been in your shoes. Um, they've done your job. Um, and that makes, a, that makes a real big difference, I think, uh, a real big cultural difference. Um, it also shows you that you really have the ability to move up uh, very quickly within the company. Uh, you know, one example of this is uh, Michelle O'Connor is our Vice President of Development. Um, she's actually next in line to be our CEO of Meditech. Um, she was a computer science major right up the street at Bridgewater State College. Um, graduated from that program, started at Meditech soon after, and has worked her way up all the way up to the top at Meditech. So a lot of companies out there will tell you, oh, you can move up very quickly within the company. Meditech, all of, our prom all, all of that promotion is done right from within. So. so the next CEO is a Bridgewater State College. Yes, she's, she's next in line, unless anything changes. Um, is, is a, is, yeah, is a, went to Bridgewater State. It's since turned into a university, I think. But at, right. the, at the time she went there, it was Bridgewater State College. But um, Great training program at Meditech. Uh, we, we're not one of those companies that just uh, you know, gives you a two-week training or hands you a booklet. Costs a lot of money to train new, to train new staff members. As a result, um, a lot of companies out there try to cut it down as much as possible. With Meditech, you're looking at probably anywhere between four to six months of just formal training, learning the software before you even begin your position. So. 
fantastic training program. And the training doesn't stop there. Uh, we actually have a staff development group that I'm that I'm part of that does trainings throughout uh, throughout your time at Meditech. Anything from management trainings to public speaking trainings to every different topic you can possibly imagine uh, related to the positions. Um, couple interesting positions here. We have many positions, so I, I do recommend that you take a look at our website uh, where we have them all listed and there's position descriptions, but here's three of the more popular ones. Um, I mentioned earlier the traveling position, uh, which is a client training specialist. And uh, with this position, like all, you would go through several months of formal training. We have you specialize in a specific area of Meditech software. So and I talked about all, there's many, many different clinical applications, administrative applications, and the financial things. Uh, rather than have you learn them all, we have you focus in on a specific area. Um, and what you, after training, you'd be going out on site to uh, customers that have recently purchased the Meditech product. And you'll go out there and um, train a core group of end users. We use a train the trainer approach. So you, you train a core group of end users and then they then take your information and train the rest of their department on the software. Um, so you're basically the face of Meditech. Um, going out there, training customers, getting them up and running. In a lot of ways it's a uh, you know, project management role. Making sure that they uh, go lo what we call go live with the software um, you know, on time, on budget, and, uh, and they're up and running and ready to go uh, when they have to be. Uh, we also have an in-house role that's somewhat similar called the Client Support Specialist. Um, with this, you're working with customers who have already gone through that training period, and they've been using the software for at least a few months, if not longer. Um, you'd be the main customer contact for them. Um, you would represent a set number of customers. Um, you'd have a contact or a couple contacts there that would come to you anytime they have a question, any type of issue, problem, anything like that, they contact you. Um, the sites really rely heavily on the Meditech system, and uh, you know, as a result, if you were to call Meditech, anyone calls Meditech, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, a human being always answers. We don't push people to voicemail, we don't have automated answering services, we don't have call centers or anything like that, so uh, pretty unique way of doing things. With this role, you're doing a lot of troubleshooting. Uh, majority of the issues aren't resolved just during the course of a conversation. Uh, you need to go in, reproduce the issue find the problem, um, you know, search knowledge base articles, do testing uh, with, with other specialists from other applications. Uh, you're working very closely with the programming staff. Uh, we're not, you're not expected to do any, any coding uh, within this role, but you'll be working closely with the programming staff. Um, and then, of course, we do have that programming, the programming roles, the technical roles. Um, you know, and this is going to range anywhere from uh, technical support specialists, people that work with our, you know, internal systems. Uh, you know, we have. Uh, many thousands of uh, PCs, laptops, all kinds of uh, technical devices, um, and there's there's groups specific to that. We have groups that deal with our servers, groups that deal with uh, you know networking, groups that deal with every different area, phones, <laughs> things like that. But uh, we have quite a few programmers. Uh, programmers are working with our existing code. Uh, we do use our own internal language at Meditech. Uh, it's very similar to C, if you're familiar with that. But people from all different uh, programming backgrounds usually have a, a very easy transition over to our language um, and the training certainly helps with that, that, that as well. It's uh, extensive training. We have the software developer role as well. Um, that's actually rather than working with our existing code, you're working with a team to create new software applications. Uh, we're, you know, our development team is always working. As a software company, your product's always evolving. Our newest products are all web-based. Um, you know, they're going to be written in HTML, XML, and uh, they're going to be all, you know, all cloud-based products. So a um, lot of exciting things on the horizon for us uh, at Meditech. So. If you're interested in any of those roles, uh, we can certainly discuss that. Also, as I mentioned on the website, there are many more uh, positions available as well. So I want to tell you also uh, some of the intangible benefits at Meditech, some of the things that really set us apart from other companies. Um, first off, uh, a real open work environment. And I think you've been to the yes, Meditech facilities several yeah. times. It's, it's very unique. Um, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful facilities. Um, they really range. We have uh, our Canton facility, which has a giant glass atrium. It's about the size of a, of, of a football field. I think it's over 100 yards. Uh, palm trees and orange trees. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Um, um, it's built on a giant, uh, it's built on a historic horse farm there. So we have quite a bit of land. Um, we have our company picnic there, uh, which you saw pictures.
pictures of earlier. Um, they had the Life is Good concert there uh, the last few summers, if you're familiar with that. Um, so a lot of land there, um, beautiful facility. We have an 18-hole golf course over at our Norwood office. Uh, if any of you are interested in golf or looking to start playing golf, uh, you can play for free. We have free golf passes for Meditech employees uh, over in, in Norwood. It's an 18-hole par 3 course. Um, uh, Pretty nice, actually pretty challenging. Um, we have gyms at, at all of our facilities, um, so you can work out. I've never actually used a gym in my 10 years at Meditech, but, uh, <laughs> but there are people that do, so uh, that's an option for you. A lot of artwork at Meditech. Um, we actually have over 4,000 unique pieces of art in our facilities. Um, so we actually have, a, we, we have an art gallery over in Canton, um, and then art throughout all of our buildings, um, quite a bit. Um, art is a major theme at Meditech. Uh, we have art shows for staff, art shows for children of staff, uh, family members of staff. Um, we have what's known as art labs, uh, where you can go down, you can uh, make sculptures, paint, things like that during the day. Um, you know, they really want it. They really try to, um, you know, foster that uh, creativity in, in, in staff members. Um, Meditech is really com uh, committed to the community as well. We uh, support, formally support, uh, 43 nonprofit charities. Uh, Meditech gives millions of dollars um, to mostly local charities. Um, also, uh, our staff members are really involved uh, with, uh, with local charities as well, so there's many opportunities for you to get involved with something like that um, you know, as, as a Meditech representative uh, working with other staff. Uh, excellent. Any questions on that? Any questions on intangibles or anything that I've covered right now? All right. Aside from those intangibles, uh, we have a, a real comprehensive benefits package, formal benefits package. Um, first off, Meditech pays 90% of the premium that's associated with, uh, with your health care. So I like this. It's a lot more money that stays within my paycheck each month rather than um, uh, you know, being spent on, uh, on health care. We have an annual cash bonus, um, which is uh, based on the success of the company that particular year. So we've had 36 years of uh, uh, continuous prosperity financially. Um, they, uh, what they do is they, um, they make a certain percentage across the board company-wide. And uh, this past couple years was right around 5%. And they'll add up everything that you made going back as far as five years and give you that percentage of the total, um, and then less any applicable taxes, obviously. Um, so that's nice. That really adds a lot to your base salary. Um, it's pretty unique uh, that Meditech gives profits back to its staff members. Uh, we have an annual salary review. So your salary, for the most part, is typically going to increase each year. It's all merit-based. Um, so you come in, you prove yourself, you'll, you'll meet with your um, supervisor, your manager, at least, uh, at least quarterly. And that being said, uh, your management team, for the most part, sits right out among you. Um, you know, I talked about the open work environment. Low-walled cubicles, uh, we don't stick in a box behind a computer all day. Your supervisor, your manager, they sit right out among you. They're there as a resource for you. They're there to answer any questions. They see the work that you do. Um, this is all the way up to the highest levels. Our founder, Neil Papalardo, sits right in an open workstation. Um, I actually, when I went through a tour of mm -hmm. Meditech, they had all the career services people take a tour. And as we walked through, you could see people, Meditech employees, mm -hmm. problem solving, working together as teams. And a gentleman looked up and said hello to us, and it was your president. Yeah, so yeah, was, Neil Papalardo. He's just like a member of the team. Yeah, know, sits right out along. Yeah. Uh, most people would never know it's him. Uh, you know, I brought a group through. I think I said this story last time. A group through recently of uh, college students, and um, he stopped me uh, and said, "Greg, who are these people in my company?" And uh, uh, he said, oh, "Okay, I have a question for you guys. Have you ever heard of software?" And they looked at him like, "Yeah, you crazy old man. We we know what software is." And he said, "Well, when I started this company, that was my first task: was explaining to people what software was because it was completely unheard of in the 1960s for the most part." So it shows you really. It, it, I hadn't really thought of that before, but really a pioneer in the software industry. There was no uh, major for that <laughs> and, uh, at MIT at the time. He's an electrical engineer. Um, so yeah, he's, he's been around for a long time and uh, has done a lot uh, for the industry. But wide open workstations, no high walled cubicles. They sit right among you. You have a problem. Uh, when I say open door <laughs> work environment, there's no physical door between you and, uh, and your management team. So that plays a big role in your, in your review. Um, for any of you that are looking to uh, continue your education, um, 
I'm sure you're aware of the high cost of higher education. Uh, Meditech offers tuition assistance to help with that cost. Um, we've had people go back for anything and, uh, and everything. Um, uh, actually, the head of our uh, legal counsel is someone that went to school with me here in Fall River. Um, and she started with me in, in my same group, went back to law school um, using tuition assistance, and is now head legal counsel at Meditech. So it really shows you how you can use that. Uh, Great vacation time. Um, I right now I think I have more vacation than I could use. Uh, I, I could use it, but I, I <laughs> been busy. Um, vacation time it starts off. Uh, you start off with two weeks accruing it monthly, and that increases uh, the longer you've been there. After uh, two years of employment, it increases to three uh, three weeks and so on. After um, 15 years, uh, you have unlimited vacation and sick time at Meditech. So. Looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, we have a profit sharing trust. Um, and basically, this works in, pl in place of uh, the 401k. Just given the success of Meditech financially, um, this has really worked out well for, for our staff. It's 100% contributed by Meditech um, annually. Um, you're vested up to a certain percentage each year. After five years, you're 100% vested in our profit sharing trust. We have a uh, referral bonus. Um, a, and staff members can refer um, your family, friends, people they know that might be interested in the role. If they are hired, um, there's a $3,000 uh, referral bonus. So if these folks who are to work at Meditech find a good student in the program next year, kind of mentor, help mm -hmm. that student get involved, yeah, you get $3,000 for bringing that student. Absolutely. Uh, I, uh, I had a student a few years ago from UMass Dartmouth. In one year, he made over thirty thousand dollars in referral in referral bonuses. Wow. Believe it or not, so. so uh, you folks have, have value to you if you have friends who work. <laughs> <in Meditech. laughs> um, we really reward longevity uh, at Meditech. A lot of our benefits are are, are you know set up that way. Uh, it, it, you know what we're looking for is uh, the ideal candidate is someone that um, it will grow with us as a company, you know, find their niche at Meditech and, and move up with us as a company. Um, after a few years of employment, you're allowed to telecommute, um, you're allowed to purchase stock. Uh, we're a privately owned company and just given the financial success of Meditech over the past 43 years, this is um, extremely popular um, and uh, you're able to purchase stock uh, annually um, after several years of employment at Meditech. Okay, so just some of the many fantastic benefits. So hopefully at this point I've uh, you know piqued your interest in Meditech. Uh, if you are interested, um, you can submit a resume. Uh, you know, I, I, first off, I, I, I'd uh, recommend that you go to our website. It's Meditech.com, and we have a career that's actually called Work Here Now up on the top. If you click on that, um, there's some more information there, and uh, most importantly, a uh, an area that goes over all the different positions that we're hiring for. I only mentioned several positions, but I think there's about 25 positions up there. Um, I'd recommend that you take a look through them, find something that you know uh, that you're interested in, and um, at that point, what you can do is submit your resume. Uh, you can do it right through uh, our website, or send it directly to jobs at meditech.com, or to colleges at meditech.com. Uh, we'll take your resume. We strive to get back to you. We have a little bit of a backlog. Um, we receive somewhere between 800 to 1,000 resumes each month. So we have a little bit of a backlog. Uh, we respond to everyone. Um, but it's uh, myself and just a handful of other recruiters. So um, this is a busy time for us. So I'd say give us a few weeks. Uh, we try to make it a two-step process whenever possible. Uh, the first step is meeting with uh, either myself or another member of the recruiting staff uh, for an interview. We'll give you a general overview uh, of the company and uh, some of the positions that we offer. Uh, the second step would be meeting with the actual group, uh, the management team there. They'll go over the specifics of the application you'd be working with, kind of the day-to-day. -day. A lot of times they have you prepare a uh, presentation. Uh, it's typically a 10 to 15 minute presentation on a healthcare topic. Topic of your choice. Now, would that be for programmers and networking folks also? For networking and programming people, there's a different step. Uh, we have uh, usually a couple tests in different areas for that. Um, for programmers, we have a uh, kind of an analytical exam, which would help us see where you would be uh, best suited uh, within the company, as well as uh, you know, kind of introducing you to our uh, introducing you to our language. Um, 
So uh, usually that takes about two to three hours. So there is one additional step there. There's a much smaller uh, test for some people from a networking IT background. Um, but uh, that's what you could expect. Um, any questions on that? Any questions on the application process? Right, as far as the application process, I know I've had students in the past that tell me that sometimes they'll get a phone call from Meditech just saying we received your application a few weeks ago, are you still interested? Is that still kind of the very first step? Yeah, typically um, you, would, you would hear from us either by uh, email or uh, through a phone call from a member of the, of the recruiting department who would contact you and uh, you know, talk to you about the next step, see if you're still interested. Uh, in a full-time permanent role, um, go over that with you and try to figure out uh, wh where your interests are and you know if it would be a, a good fit for you. So you really want to be, if you apply to Meditech, you want to be prepared for that phone call. Because you know you might be shopping and you look at your, your, your cell phone and you've got Meditech on, uh, you know, contacting you. So I encourage you that if you put a phone number on your, on your uh, resume, that you're careful that you put a phone number where you want to get calls from employers. And that when you when you take the call, you're prepared to talk with an employer. Yeah, I think I, you know, I think that's that's good advice, not just for Meditech, but for you know for those of you that are looking for you know at any, at any company. I have a tendency to uh, to get to always get people at the worst possible time when I call them. Um, you know, a lot of times they're driving or doing whatever, but. Uh, um, yeah, so you know, it's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, with, with all companies as well, I always recommend uh, to your students that they, they really research the company. It's, it's a competitive job market out there. You know, I talked about all the resumes and applications that we get just at Meditech. That's not unique to us. Um, given the economy right now, given uh, uh, you know, a number of different factors, it is very competitive out there. And uh, you need to really stand out. One of those ways is by really researching the um, researching the company, researching the positions. Um, I recommend that you uh, make uh, full use of um, the Career Services Department. Uh, they have a fantastic um, uh, resume developing tool, software tool. Software tool. Yeah. It's optimal resume, and if you want to use that tool, you sign into your Access BCC account. The only thing you need to remember is to click on College Resources, and then you will see the orange button for Optimal Resume, and it's a great tool that will give you samples, and it's actually a template. Um, and I know when Greg has looked at resumes and the students have done them on Optimal, he'll always say to me, boy, these, these resumes from Bristol really stand out. So yeah, they, they definitely do. I've been, uh, I've been impressed with that program. Um, and one page resumes usually are for the most part I mean there there you know there's there's different schools of thought on that but for the most part you know especially coming out of school recent grads recent grads um, uh, you know once you have to look at it through the eyes of a uh, you know someone reviewing the resume typically they have about maybe 20 seconds to look at them um, so uh, you know try to make it easy easy in the eyes so that's why you know building a resume is really bit of an art form so I you know I recommend uh, work with the career services department from everything from the resume building to mock interviews to uh, you, you know uh, thank you everything uh, you know they're they're there to uh, to help you out so uh, take full advantage of that but with that being said any questions on, on anything at all anything that I can clarify for you about the company the position the application process anything at all um, is it typical that you would hire Associates degrees, or is it more that you hire bachelors? We have uh, we've hired a tremendous number of people from here yeah. at uh, at Bristol Community College. Um, you know, with associates, I, I couldn't even give you a number uh, from Priscilla Grosser's classes alone. Probably close to thirty mm -hmm. in recent years. Um, I think you hired eight or twelve last year. Yeah, I, I, I think it was about I think it was about twelve people last year. So um, I'm less concerned with uh, with whether you have an associate's, bachelor's, PhD. Uh, I'm more concerned. There's a number of other factors that we look at. Um, we're looking at someone who wants to come in, uh, work hard, prove themselves within the company. Um, you know, to tell you the tr truth, I'd, I'd prefer someone with an associate's uh, in programming or IT to someone with a uh, bachelor's degree in criminal justice in most cases. So. Um, you know, a lot of times that works out better for us. That being said, I was a political science major, so I don't know if they'd hire me today, but uh, <laughs> luckily, I, luckily I got through when I did. Um, any, other, uh, any other questions? Cool. I'm just yes. curious who your main competitors 
Uh, main competitors, yes. There are uh, a couple uh, companies out there that do something very similar. Uh, one of the biggest is a company called Epic. Um, they are based in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. Um, so they are always out at all the different colleges that I go to. They're, they're growing very rapidly. I think they just added a million square feet of office space. Um, they're signing a lot of deals. They've been very busy for the same factors that are leading to our growth. Um, they are located in Madison, though. So one of, our, one of our benefits is that we're Massachusetts-based and we're just outside the Boston area. But very similar company. They actually they started about 10 years after Meditech, and they still use the Mumps language that was developed by our founder, Neil Papalardo, uh, to develop. There to develop their software. There's also a company called uh, Cerner, uh, based out of Kansas City, um, and they develop uh, somewhat similar products. A um, couple other companies, uh, you know, delve into it a little bit. Um, you know, it's part of what they do, but uh, only a few companies do this. Um, you know, exclusively. Meditech being one of them. We don't uh, do anything else besides develop electronic health records. That's that's our only that's our only area. Greg, I know that all of your positions are listed on your website and students can certainly research them, but are there any that stand out to you that right now you really need to fill classes with? Or what, what positions would you say are probably the ones that you need to fill um, you know, The biggest need right now is for people with backgrounds that are, are technical. Um, you know, especially programmers. Programmers, uh, there's always a tremendous need for. Um, you know, I think there's about there's a stat out there that there's uh, four open positions for every programmer out there, programmer, software developer out there. So if, you, if you're coming from that background, you're in a very good field. It's a very good job market for you out there. Um, technical people, technical support specialists, things like that. But also people with a clinical background. Uh, we're working, we're looking for people to work with our, our clinical applications. Um, these applications have become a lot more involved uh, in recent years with our, with our newest products. As a result, we're looking for people with um, backgrounds. Um, nursing, biology, chemistry, you know, all those different areas. Um, so if you have a clinical background, there's a tremendous need. Um, you know, working with our in-house roles as well as our traveling positions, uh, marketing positions, going out on site, demoing software to decision makers. Uh, we're hiring sales staff, if, for those of you that have a sales background. Um, you know, a lot of travel with that, you're given a specific sales territory. So a management marketing degree, associate's degree might be helpful, especially if you have some leadership roles at the college or a post. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. You know, that, that's what they're really looking for is someone that's well-rounded, um, strong communication skills, both written and verbal. Uh, you're, you're out there representing Meditech individually, so that's where those, uh, those comm skills really come into play. Great. Perfect. Any, any other questions? Now's your chance. So a cut on GPA for a um, yeah, no, we don't. Um, you know, we don't have a formal cutoff. Every group's a little bit different, so there are some hiring managers that'll tell me, "Greg, I'm only looking for this. I'm only looking for that." But everything's, everything's. Um, you know, for the mo we don't have very many rules that are company wide um, specific. Uh, so there are there some groups that will have a cutoff and not look below a you know certain GPA. Absolutely. Are there some groups that won't hire anyone without a bachelor's degree? Yes, but there are many groups that will. Um, and uh, so we have many opportunities for that. What can students do during the interview? Let's say they have a successful resume, they, they research resumes, they maybe use Optimal, looked at the job description and kind of took a lot of keywords right from the job description, put it into their resume, and now they have an interview. And they're meeting with you or somebody to do the screening interview. Certainly researching the company. Is there anything that they can do to really impress you during that interview? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, not just at Meditech, but, you know, anywhere you apply. Again, you know, the first step is researching the company. Uh, the second step is practice. You know, uh, interviewing is one of those things that the more you do it, the easier it becomes. It's like working out, you know, the more you work out. Yeah, you yeah. Um, yeah. Having done thousands of interviews, I can tell you that I, I see people that are, are seeing the questions that I'm asking, hearing the questions that I'm asking them for the first time. And I, I, I come across people that you can tell have heard this, you know, heard these questions a hundred times, and they could answer them in their sleep. Can you uh, give us an idea of one or two of the questions that yeah, you might ask? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of companies now, what they're doing is they're using uh, behavioral-based uh, interviewing questions. Um, the idea behind this is that uh, the best way to kind of gauge 
how a uh, how a candidate will perform given a um, specific task is how they've performed given a somewhat similar task in the past. Um, so these questions are typically going to start off with uh, tell me about a time when, describe a situation where. Um, a lot of times, people people have no problem answering the, you know the, the hard skills based questions. You know what software systems have you used? Um, what uh, you know what programs have you used in the past? Th those are simple. Those are you know um, cut and dry. Uh, a little bit harder is uh, you know th those tell me about a time questions. And, and the, the key to this, you know, an example would be, tell me about a time when you had to deal with a difficult customer. How did you handle that situation? Um, it forces you to go back, think of a specific scenario that you've dealt with, either in class or in your, in your position, um, and uh, think of a scenario. Um, uh, they use in, uh, they use something called the STAR method. You take the situation, S-T-A-R, situation or task that you were given, A, the action that you took, and then R, hopefully positive result that, uh, that came out um, as a result of your actions. Um, so you know, keep that in mind when answering those types of questions. But that is very common now, and a majority of employers are going to ask you those uh, behavioral-based questions. So I'd recommend you know, do, do a Google, Google search of that and um, get some examples. Uh, um, prepare ahead of time. A waitress. Waitress. You know, if you worked as a waitress or in fast food, you had to deal with difficult customers, or and that can be a great uh, training ground for working under pressure, working with difficult customers. So. Yep, absolutely. Uh, great. Any uh, any other questions? Now's your chance. Yes. I have another year of school in the program that I'm in. Okay. Nursing. Yep. I'm interested in informatics. Online. Yeah, absolutely. Huge field. Nursing informatics is uh, one of the faster growing fields out there now. So one of my questions was, does your company ever have part-time we unfortunately don't. It's all full-time permanent roles uh, that we hire for right now, uh, but we will be hiring uh, next year. We've been hiring for 44 straight, going on 44 straight years. Um, we're in a fast-growing industry. We're a fast-growing company, and uh, we will be hiring next year, uh, not just this year. Um, for those people that are looking, you know, if your classes are more, you know, t towards the evening, um, you know, we do have people that come on um, prior to their, you know, their graduation date. That's not all that uncommon, but it really depends on your schedule, what you're comfortable with um, what you can balance <laughs> really as well so um, yes Any other Anyone questions? Else? perfect well thank you all very much for coming I appreciate it um, I have some uh, handouts up here with some of the positions but you know the best place for information is right on our website metatech.com um, there's a main number there uh, on this as well or on our website call it and uh, uh, you can ask for myself Greg Clarkin as I mentioned a human being always answers and they can put you right in contact with me um, or uh, you can go to uh, uh, the college recruiter so if you go to colleges at metatech.com uh, you can email me. I can usually get back to you uh, within that day. Okay? Perfect. Thanks a lot, guys, and uh, have a fantastic day. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you.